It's July the 13th, 2023. 2023. And we are going to upload this video the same day, which is July the 13th, 2023, today. The tide is still coming down. It'll be low tide in about a half an hour. And, um... Because the cell phone don't really give you the detail. I'm just going to take you along the coastline. You can see the same thing as me. In, this is the test area, part of the test area. We just uh, took a bunch of pictures. I'm going to show you that tonight during the regular live show. We do five live shows a week on nuclear. We do species counts. This is what we're doing again today, day 15 of the marine research expedition due to Fukushima nuclear meltdowns in the Atlantic Ocean. And it's pretty laid back, we're just going to cruise this whole coastline. Now the tide is almost all the way down, as you can see there's nothing in the tide zones. We're hoping to find Capelin. And you'll, when you see the Capelin, you'll know there's Capelin there because uh, I'm going to have to make some adjustments, so bear with me. find out the exact time. So we're actually still 44 minutes away from low tide, which is perfect. So we're catching the falling tide, we'll catch the slack tide, and we'll catch about the first half an hour of the rising tide. And then we'll do the next, when we move up the coastline, we're going to shoot the same type of film again. And we're not seeing any kind of activity in the tidal zones whatsoever. There's no, um, there's no marine life, no birds feeding, no, no, no species. So normally uh, birds will go into the low tide zones and pick up um, sea urchins and mussels and, and clams and snails and stuff like this and drop it on the rocks uh, in the communities they'll do it on the sidewalks and the sides of the roads to break it open and what you notice when you're doing these communities is there's no shelves on the shorelines, there's no shelves on the sides of the roads which there should be. There's no smell really. And the only thing we're seeing is kelp weed. And it's a very sickly looking kelp weed. I'm gonna today I'm zooming out, I think. And so this is a whole nest beautiful nesting area for seabirds. Would be perfect. And so over the summer, I'll get better at doing this kind of footage. But uh, I think it's absurdly important to get this high quality footage. And so I might screw up the first couple of times, but I'll, I'll get it. Because you won't know until, um, until you watch it on a replay on a big screen how it turned out. Now the equipment I've got is pretty darn nice equipment. 
and good uh, both lenses are the exact same lenses so you get the same colors same depths <coughs> it's a very high quality actually camera with it's got all the bells and whistles we're on a um, reasonable gimbal the gimbal can actually hold a much bigger camera and as the tie starts to fall we're going to start seeing beaches when we get up here in another 20 minutes or something. You see all these like, little beaches in there? Like little beaches like that, but better than that. And you're looking for any kind of activity, any kind of life whatsoever. And because it's my first day trying to do a large area with the big camera, I'm going to stay offshore. We still got a bit of a ground swell coming in from the last uh, number of days of easterly winds. We need opposing winds to bring these seas down. We're on the continental shelf with the biggest, the biggest migratory path for seabirds on the entire planet. We estimated 46 million birds are supposed to be here nesting all along this beautiful, perfect environment. Now right here, you kind of got access to the road, but most of the shoreline, people don't have access to it. This, this little spot, there's some random houses. This whole coastline is pretty populated. Gotta watch my sounder. I forgot to check my sounder. <laughs> We're okay. And we're, we're trying to document over this whole summer, this is day 15, uh, species die off. So, we just checked uh, one of the bird colonies and I've seen around 1% of babies, uh, fledglings, chicklets, hatchlings, of uh, seagulls. Uh, no, no babies for the tickle ass. Uh, I believe I got some pictures. I took an awful lot of pictures. I got some pictures of a Comorant colony that's not supposed to be here. It's not native to this island or this coastline. But they're here. And there's a couple of crows in there. Three crows. Wow. Three crows. They're not feeding in the tidal zones, though. There's a fork crow. <clears throat> and uh, I have a shoulder harness for the gimbal to take the strain off my arm. But it's not working the way I want it. I'm going to have to uh, make some adjustments, I guess. I have another shoulder harness I'm going to try to remember to put on the boat tonight so I don't forget. And because the price of gas has gone crazy, uh, the price of gas has gone crazy. So we got some stains on the shorelines, but there's no, there's no diversity, there's no birds feeding in there, there's no little sandpipers, there's no little uh, shorebirds looking for insects. And normally insects would come out and visit you this close. There's a couple of ducks. Holy shit, we got a couple of ducks. How good is that? Sorry, I'll get it. Remember, I'm on a big zoom here. Just hang on. There we go. I'll get better at this over the next few days, so. I thought I saw three, but there's two in the video. Excellent. At least it's something. Again, I'm confused at what they're Why we're not seeing incredible flocks? There's supposed to be 50, 46 million birds coming through. 
and that was supposed to start a month and a half ago. We still have never seen a single migratory bird. These ducks might be migratory. There is a lot of residential ducks that are here year round. And this is the most, the most we've seen I think is four ducks in one day. Yay. Should see 500 every day. You should see thousands of camarants and puffins and shearwaters and egg downs. And it's just this incredible diversity of migratory birds that should be coming through here. You got a little beach in there. And it's not, it's not, and I don't think the capelin will roll on a beach like that. They need typically sand, right? But uh, they will funnel in all of these places, and the uh, seabirds will take advantage of that. So we're going to go in the bay, because in here there's a lot of sand at the bottom of it, and see at low tide if there's any feeding going on. And we'll come back out on the south side of the bay, and we'll go around to the colony and at some points I might speed up because we want to get the colony before the video is over I want to be able to go out and um, the island one that I left the live stream on this morning the island um, ones that we left this morning <clears throat> I'm gonna have to screw with uh, the camera for a second here screw in with the camera It's just my uh, remote control doesn't seem to be wanting to work here. It's not tight enough or something. Look at dirt. We'll get there in a second. My apologies to everybody. I'm almost finished, so that should be good. There we go, we're back in business. I was worried I was going to have to shut the camera off to fix it. And then we wouldn't have the stream where I can just upload the raw foil. Because the raw foil is going to be... Uh, the raw foil is going to be... Uh, going to be the better one. We're just going to move down. to see something in the tidal zones. We're about a half an hour away from low tide. So there's no activity so far this morning anywhere. There's no migratory birds, there's no sea life, there's no nothing. Morning!
NGOs gone. Where have all the anti-nuclear? You got all these uh, anti-weapon nuclear. They get all the front pages. They're they're always doing protests. Very active. And none of them seems to know Fukushima has melted down. Inconceivable. Wow, see another crow. Jeez. That's five crows in one day. What the hell is going on, man? That's amazing. They're trying he's trying there's two of them in there actually. They're gonna need a bit of practice, I can tell that right now, my apologies. I know how important it is to keep the video still, but that don't mean it's easy to do. Start watching my sounder before I smack a few rocks, that'll be fun. <laughs> Won't be the first time on top of that. I've smacked rocks with this boat at almost full speed. And, um,. It was several days just to, to get the skier, get over the skier. Just was terrified for the next couple of days under underwater. And I've done this a number of times, and it's the same thing where it's the same thing where uh, some people are friendly. Some come, there's a lot of people coming out of their houses to say hi. And just look. And so you're seeing what I'm seeing, and there's n hopefully this shows up in really good quality. I guess we'll find out when I get home. I'll be, I have autofocus on. And so I'm hoping that'll, but because you're changing the focus constantly, you're adjusting everything. So I've been for 18 minutes. I'm hoping to do this for two hours, which is what we were doing with the live streams on the ocean for the last uh, number of days we've been out. So we're doing species counts, we're doing field research to quantify our assertions that Fukushima has been a major event for humanity and this is a very bleak, not to see any species during the middle of the migratory and not to see any little shorebirds, you know, the insect eating or, or seed eating little birds that you would normally find at your bird feeders for instance you know um, sparrows and robins and everything else I haven't seen a single robin this year that's an interesting point too no grays no blues so this beach coming up this would be perfect for capelin <coughs> This would be perfect for Capelin. The next time I do, um, which is probably going to be tomorrow, will be north of here. 
so we're just coming up to the beach. I'm going to move in. Sonar is pretty iffy looking for some reason. It says 20 feet, but even if the... Here we go. Now we're looking at the beach. There's two seagulls, but they're not feeding. But that beach, there's no activity. It's low, I'm a slow tide. <clears throat> and tides are still going down for till next week. I'm not sure when the full moon is, but. These beaches, every one of these beaches is super important. Looks like I'm seeing sea urchins up in that rock. I'm gonna move in there and get a look at that. It's coming up in a second. And this is what you expect to see everywhere. You won't see it in the communities. Is, um, we only found one rock where we were able to see actual sea urchins. So that rock there, I'm gonna zoom in hopefully. And the next time I come through, I'm going to have to um, do the opposite and take pictures so I can document this with pictures. And I don't want to stop the video because I want a, a... So I believe I'm looking at sea urchins. I'm zooming right in and I don't really want to get any closer. It's 11 feet. But it, we'll see on the video when I watch it on uh, the big screen after it's posted. That, that does definitely, uh, it's just that one spot, we haven't seen that on any other rocks. Oh, well, there, there was in that other colony, there was a few sea urchins, but that's that sea urchins. So that's pretty cool. There's no, I don't see any mussels or clam shells or snail shells in that mix, but I don't know until I watch the video later. Oh, we got a little shorebird. I lost track of him when I looked down. He should show up though. I think we got him when he was moving. I just see him jumping. So one shorebird in 15 trips. That's all we've seen in 15 trips. It was one little a land, what you call land birds. And there should be all kinds of them, like shooting back and forth, grabbing insects out of the air to raise their fledglings right now. And their little chickadees, their little hatchlings. And so the tally this morning is pretty dismal. But we're 23 minutes into it now. I'm starting to get the handle of the gimbal. A little bit of practice to get back into it because you're, you're doing a lot of things. You got to pay attention to where you're going because hitting a rock is not a pretty, not a very good option. So do, do, see the little sand in there. Capon will actually lay their eggs in these little spots of sand. But we got some more beaches coming up, and at uh, the bottom of us, big beaches. And we're offshore because it gives you a, a wider angle, right? And so if there's any movement above or, or at the low tide line, you're going to get boat of it, hopefully. There's very, very few houses on this side. I think I've seen some more shells in there on the beach. And that rock ladder. Woohoo! 
pay attention, Dana. Oh, we had a couple of sandpapers that time. I screwed up. There's another one. It's three. It's hardly a uh, migratory flock, but still it's three. As we like to say down here, tree. So there's basically a highway above here, and people got their houses built along the side of it. <laughs> they're very, they're right on the road itself, and they're right, or right on the edge of the cliff. Very, very pretty to look at. Hello, Mr. Siegel. I apologize what the nuclear industry done. So the field research is clearly shown after 15 days, no migratory birds have came through. There's no uh, migratory colonies. The, the seabird colonies that are out there are the residential ones. And they have a total failure of uh, newborns, of, of fledglings. We see maybe 1% survival rate. And none of them are, they're all still dependent upon and their parents bring them food. Um, when we look at the pictures tonight, in the second part of the show, we'll see if the fledglings got any feathers. They should have feathers, I believe. It'd be nice to have an auto toilet. nice to have an autopilot and you can trace your route and the boat will just follow it for you and you can do all the fancy camera work <coughs> make it uh, a real cinematic experience of this extinction event and so it's really boring when there's nothing to look at so it's, it's there's no why would a tourist want to go to a coastline anymore for it how can a province not try to help the birds recover? How can the universities not be trying to, to help the hatchlings get their deer going out and starting to bring bring them freaking food, get them get them to grow, and and any eggs that are abandoned, rescue them and try to to hatch them. And we we need to do everything we possibly can to try to save the species that are survived this long. Uh, this extinction has been going on for 80 years. Fukushima was a pulse. It was a massive pulse plume. It covered the entire planet in just about 20 days. Certainly in 40 days, I can hear a crow. Hello, Mr. Crow. He's like, I don't see him, but I can hear him. So, we're looking for any mussels. We're going to shoot in if we see any kind of uh, snails. They'll stick out on the rock as big white spots. And now we've been doing this. Uh, there's a crow right there. Right there. Well, he was. This little beach here in Cape Town will roll on these little beaches. I got no idea what I'm looking at on that beach. What kind of pollution that it is. Something. The only thing on the beach is this random pollution, but looks at it. I'm shocked myself and heartbroken. We got no species whatsoever, no migratory. 46 million birds have failed 